can hold. Where'd you get this idea? <laughs> Maybe people don't know. The first pair of release of the uh, very pair it took an exacto knife, further than it took an exacto knife, cut these holes out. That's basically what I'm about to do. These have been sitting in the closet for mad long and I ain't pulled them out since I'm not really enthused by them the way I once was. My boy put red laces in here to make me want to jump back in that bag. But I can't find no red laces. If somebody got some extra red laces, send them through. But for the time being, I'm about to just open these doors. Pause. Oh, Hope you can hear you talking with the music. Your own music. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit here and wait. What other questions do I have? When did you first start being inspired by Virgil? I used to run into VA. I'm calling by his name, initials name. I used to run into Virgil often when I was living on the East Coast between DC and Baltimore and New York. Mm -hmm. And in my younger days, when I was managing an artist, Kanye did these shows at the, um, damn, what was the name of that casino? I want to say it was The Rebel in Atlantic City. But Ye did the shows back to back, and Virgil was like super low key at the time, so he could just maneuver through without nobody really being on his back. But I knew who he was, I knew what he was what he was working on, I understood his influence, and um, throughout that series of shows, we would have all of them, throughout that series of shows, we would go sleep in the car and shit like that, but when we woke up, I was on the hunt to find whoever, whether it be Don C, whether it be A, whether it be Virgil, Ivan Jasper, any of the guys, I was trying to make sure I'm trying to create a similar, similar situation to how um, Big Sean got his good music here. And crazy enough, those opportunities really started to present themselves. But um, throughout that throughout that time, I was running into Virgil damn near every day, a couple times a day. Then when I got the Under Armour situation and I started running into him in Soho, I remember even giving him my card and shit like that. And then probably like. The last time I saw him was right outside the vape store. Nigo didn't know me at the time, so it was irrelevant. It's just giving you a location. But uh, yeah, I saw him, and he told me he was gonna take, take the card and keep me in mind he was weighing options at, at, at a certain time. And shortly thereafter, the 10 came to life, where you started seeing photos of the 10 um, come to life. The 10 from the Nike collab. Mm. What was the first? I got one hold down by the Fire. What was the first piece that you ever bought that was designed by Virgil? Damn, I didn't even I didn't even buy it. But back in the day, me and who y'all know is Mark Gray, who's actually on a project. Um, that's my baby brother, by the way. Blood, same mom, same dad. We shot this video, I don't even remember the name of the song, but we had a bunch of guys come out dressed in all black and shit like that. It's gotta still be on YouTube. But um one of the one of the bros had pirate shorts. So we asked him, well, I asked him if we could borrow his black pair of pirate shorts for the video and his red pair of pirate shorts for the video. And I crazy enough, I in the video I wore the pirate shorts. 
a wealth and loyalty tee that I designed based on like what Ricardo was doing at Givenchy at the time. So it was a bunch of stars all over it. I put, I don't even know what number I put on the back. It might've been a number on the back, but that was of course influenced by that of Pyrex. And the Jordans I wore in the video were actually the OG version of this shoe with the Nike Air on the back and everything. Five from 1990. Crazy. Yeah. Ironically enough, that's a great, that's a great, uh, great question. Hell of a parallel. Um, full circle moment. Full circle as you cut yeah, out morning. circles. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Who was one? Fire. Exactly like this. Fire, you get mad shit done. Exactly. Um, another question: Do you think that your style of designing, when it comes to clothes, when it comes to curating a fit, do you think that that was influenced a lot by people you look up to, or is it something that was kind of just like innate in you? I think it's a hybrid of everything. Like, um, me and Lil Bro, we used to get dressed and to figure out, like, this is pre Instagram and all of that. So, images came, like, few and far between. You only really got images of people if an award show popped off, say, did a shoot for, like, a magazine publication, or, you know, later on down the line, YouTube came around and you were able to. Uh, People would drop like day-to-day -day vlogs and shit like that. Wiz was famous for the day-to-days around that era. Lil Wayne was giving you like little documentary footage. Shit that would have lived in like the barbershop by way of the DVD or the bootleg man or whatever y'all call them in y'all hood started showing up on YouTube. So I was able to like, I say that to say we used to go on Google and pull images? Yeah, so we would go. I would go on Google and type like Pharrell Williams or Pharrell Babe or some shit like mm -hmm. that. And he had this line on a song with Wayne where he said camo shorts. No, no, Wayne had the line on Pharrell's song. They had a song together called Yes, I believe. I could be bugging, but I think so. And Wayne had the line where he said camo shorts, no socks with the red bitch. Walk up to my closet, fuck around and get ahead. And then me and Lil Bro were like ice cream or BBC teas, or if we could find big teas um, that we could buy in like consignment shops and shit like that, we would do that. We would do camo shorts, and we was wearing baits, no socks, or ice creams, no socks. Literally. Fire. Um, oh, but to answer your question, Nicole, yeah. I pull inspiration from pretty much any and everybody. Back when I was young, we used to do that, and even still, when we pulled it, we had our own little twist to it. I probably was not wearing the same camo shorts as Pharrell. I know for a fact I was not wearing the same camo shorts as Pharrell. I might have had the same baits as Pharrell, the same ice creams as Pharrell. Um, but not nah, heavily influenced in that regard. And then even now, like, I got a decent group of friends that get fly, get busy. Um, and everybody got their own individual way of getting down. Like, I got homies from Atlanta, I got homies from Philly, DC. Maryland, just like me with Baltimore. Uh, but yeah, we all got our way. Like, everybody got their own shit going on. And even when you watch the people gallery, like when you hear people, um, you hear people break down their fit and shit like that. It's a lot of similarities between myself and a lot of other people. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just a certain flaw. You gotta give a fuck. I feel like if everybody that gives a fuck is of a certain cloth and of a certain uh, like mindedness. Can you tell everyone about? your outfit today? Today, I'm wearing um, a hoodie from an upcoming Static Passion drop. Hand-painted, of course. Um, I'm wearing a long bond shoelace as a belt, per usual. I have a uh, Chrome Hearts belt chain that I put together myself by way of different Chrome Hearts accessories. Man, I lost, I don't want to say I lost, but one was stolen from me. My first Chrome Hearts belt was stolen from me. It was attached to a wallet, that's gone. Got stolen from an Airbnb. And 
And then my most recent Chrome Hearts belt chain was stolen, attached to a wallet again. Uh, not stolen, but thrown away by housekeepers in, in New York. I had it inside of a brown paper bag and they threw the damn bag away. If you know what a Chrome Hearts belt chain costs, it'll make you sick knowing that it's in the trash can. But this one came to life because those two went away. Those two were fairly similar and just aesthetic, but this one is kind of like, I'm shirt. It's like, um, it's a belt, like, little loop thing. It's, uh, what is this called? A safety pin. You get these, which they, they could live on like a necklace or something if I really wanted to take them off and have them live there. Some people keep this alone. This was short, so I attached this to this. It just hangs off the back. Calm, wear it every day. Yeah. And um, the jeans. The jeans. So these are Louis Vuitton, Virgil era Louis Vuitton. We got a specific night of my boy's gone, but yeah, this was done by the way. Holds out. I feel comfortable with it too. My son just sized out of his pair. We keeping everything. Um, but yeah, Louis Vuitton, flare denim by Virgil. These came by way of his early visits to gallery department. Before the hype and all of that, he um, was just walking down, well the story goes that he was just walking down the street one day along Beverly Boulevard, um, the first location, not the new one. But walking down the street one day and saw something that intrigued him in the window. He ended up going inside, falling in love with the denim construction of what Jesse was putting together and then the little hand painted touch by Josue. And he bought damn near every pair he could get his hands on in his size, which I believe is a 36. Don't go jump in the comments correcting me. I really, really don't know. But um, yeah, he took a lot of that back to Paris with him and you would see him just maneuver through the streets and gallery denim. He had a lot of his gallery denim stitched with Chrome Hearts crosses because of his relationship with the family, all of the above. But that came to life, he was early in that regard. 2018, he went to Art Basel and dropped that collab between Off-White and Chrome Hearts and used uh, orange, like, gift guide gallery denim. That was Art Basel 2017, Off-White times Chrome Hearts. That was gallery department denim. Didn't know that. Um, yeah, and all this shit is Googleable. You just gotta know what you're looking for. But, um... Yeah, this pair is just like an original pair of like flare, what you would deem flare denim. Very similar to what Gallery Department is still doing to this day by way of the Levi's, but Virgil just jumped out there and gave like a premium approach with Louis Vuitton denim. But like I said, he took all the pairs back to the story goes. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. And he took it all back to his atelier with Louis Vuitton in Paris and just started cooking up, chefing up. So this pair is obviously inspired by that. And we got no holes. Fire. Fire, by the way. Man. It's so much better. I don't know what's gonna happen when it rains, but little Maddie Boy cross, Maddie Boy lips coming out of them, that's kinda of crazy. But he's fire. I'm definitely gonna wear them right now. Uh, we got one. Got the other. Any other questions? Um, where, what is your favorite hmm. what is your favorite everyday fit? Like for something that you're just gonna like. Vintage tea. Sourced by the good folks over at Static Passion. Um, either Static Sweats or Chrome Heart Sweats. Um, Some MMYs. MMYs for the good guys, definitely. A good pair of wings to do you right. Um, chrome hat. Static T. Yeah, Static T, Chrome Trucker. Static Vintage T, Chrome Trucker. 
static sweats, MMYs, and whatever bag I feel like for the day, depending on what I gotta do. As you can see, I got a lot of shit to do. This little tiger bag was actually full when I came here, but that's like a duffel on your back. That's a good one. Um, if I don't have a lot to do, I typically carry a smaller bag. What got you interested in carrying bags in the first place? My dad used to carry a bag. My dad is a very cleanly man, and he actually has a colostomy bag, my father does. So in order to maintain a certain level of cleanliness, the man operates his life out of a little handbag that he always kept with him. So at a young age, I was like desensitized to that whole mindset of, a man carrying a bag being feminine or anything of that world. Like, mm -hmm. Hell no. Honestly, to me, it represented a certain level of organization and cleanliness. Just not walking around with a whole bunch of shit in your pocket. For me though, with all of my bags, if it's not, if it's not something that can be attached to me by way of like a wristlet, or if it can live on my back, it's over with. You can consider that bag gone. So I gotta have, like, that's why you always see on my on my Goyard accessories, it's always a strap, whether it be for my wrist or my shoulder, it's always a strap, two more. Fire. Two more coming from you. Um, next question. Aside from fashion and music, what is your biggest interest? Business, fatherhood, the two are kind of associated because my motivation in business is fueled by my fatherhood. Fueled by the work ethic of my father. Fueled by the motivation that comes by way of my Blake who's my son. So, um, yeah, I would say uh, fatherhood and business. Love it. Yeah. Mm. Do you have any advice for kids trying to get their brands off the ground? I'm trying to get my motherfucking brand off the ground, kids. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, or just anyone trying to start, like, what gave you the the courage to make your own clothes? I've been making my own clothes since the, since I can remember. We was making our own clothes just because we couldn't afford what we wanted. To. When you got enough confidence, you just operate in that mindset of just like, yeah, my shit is shit. I started making I started making static sweatpants because I couldn't afford chrome heart sweatpants. I started making uh, static tees because I couldn't afford chrome hearts tees. And even when I could afford it, the access was just, it was difficult to even, maybe chrome hearts is the wrong example because that's like, more recent for a lot of y'all, but like, when we couldn't afford a trip to New York to get big, uh, a trip to New York to get BBC before it went mainstream and was in like DTLR and Shoe City and shit, you had to really plan that shit out. This is pre-grail and all of that shit, so I started creating before then. But again, it came by way of a, a sense of desperation. Get dying Air Forces that was white because you wanted a, a fresh pair of white joints to go to school in, but once they became dirty, it was like you either had to pull off a creative move or it was done for. So we started doing cool shit, like dip dyeing on them, writing on them and shit like that. This is pre, uh, pre Virgil, <laughs> like the tan, taking the Sharpie, writing the Helvetica, this is a before all that. But a lot of what he did resonated with me because it came from that whole mindset of feeling like I could do anything. When I see him like, where I seen him rather sending Nike designs or sending Louis Vuitton like design like edits and shit like that by way of Snapchat or Instagram using the draw tool to like really manipulate it from his phone. That made me feel like it was capable. I ain't even gonna tell y'all how I design. We ain't even gonna get into that. Maybe one day, but no, it's crazy. Just find your way, bro. Trust yourself, trust your price point. Find your way. Take talents to the mirror. Let's see what we doing. Shit. Did I break that? Yeah. I just broke that. Yeah. <laughs> I can fix it. No, nah, it's good. Maybe it don't belong on there. 
Somebody will freak out if they break that shit. I am not somebody. Why is it a roll of toilet paper right <laughs> Probably from you blowing your nose. Great pair. When is next static drop? Monday. All this shit hand painted though, so I'm gonna y'all motherfuckers know right now. This shit ain't cheap. But we're gonna have something for people on a budget as well. But it's for sure hand painted. I can attest. Hand painted. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shit is not. This is. Huh. We talking about Mona Lisa the hoodies. <laughs> we talking about Starry Night of sweatpants. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's it. Take a trip back to the mirror. Let me see how I feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm.